one of the things I did when I went into every school was I offered to give, um, give the schools back something. So run workshops with teachers, um, do some work on research projects with senior students, many of whom are doing actual research-based projects these days. Um, and in, in the case of one school, I, I offered to mentor all 30 students in the um, general studies class. And I did one-to-one -one sessions with them and I flew up there and did that, spent two days just sitting and talking to them for half an hour about their projects and giving, helping them with ideas. So, I mean, I, I think that um, if you put it into that context, um, I think there was a reciprocity there. And that, I guess, is my answer. With informed consent, the one thing I wanted to say is, see, consent's a very interesting notion because we tend to construct it legally, as Rita would know. But, I, but, you know, the legal and ethical notions of consent, they're on a continuum, but they're not the same thing. And I think that, the, you know, it's like what I was saying about the laws that construct or constitute an adult from a, uh, or a child, um, they're very uneven laws. And I think we need to um, really look at it de facto, not de, de jure, in terms of how do we know we've got <laughs> consent in different situations. I don't, I don't think it's something you can, you can have one definition for. Um, I mean, I, I think this sort of um, bright line approach to, to consent is is problematic. Um, I mean, just in response to, to your question about gaining informed consent, I think that that's where there is a lot that can also be gained in, con in actual, actually engaging with your participants around consent itself and engaging participants with how, so not only how you construct your project in terms of design, but what you actually do with the material that you generate from that project. So as a researcher, I go into my research thinking I would like this information and I would like data of this kind so that I can use it to inform policy or so that I can use it in other ways. But actually engaging your participants in a discussion about how they want to produce that output for themselves and how they want to be engaged in shaping shaping it and making decisions about how it is to be used. And that's where, I mean, it's, it's a very challenging process, but you will, I think, find that you get a multiplicity of different views expressed even within a, a group of participants of, say, half a dozen people, whereas if you go to your participants in a very open way and say, OK, we're having this focus group discussion, um, what are we going to do with the information that you've shared with us in this focus group discussion? You might get one person that says, I'm, I'm consenting to you using this information in any way that, that you uh, would like. Um, I don't ever want to see a transcript. I don't ever want to see a draft publication. Um, and then you'll get someone who says, um, actually, I would like you to give me the transcript of this interview. I would like to see um, what the output of this interview has been. And then you might get someone who says, um, I would actually like to see the draft publication and see how you contextualise my quote and my mm. words and my ideas and my participation for me to decide how it's going to be used. Um, and that is challenging. It is very challenging. And I think that's actually very confronting as, as researchers as well. But I think providing as many opportunities for participants to be involved in that part of the decision making of research, I actually think is, is ethical. I'm going to disagree a little bit with just something that Rita said, which is that I, I actually think, I mean, there's no way, philosophically, there's no way somebody can give you full informed consent. I mean, does a medical researcher who agrees to have their blood tested, does, do, do they really know that the subjects understand what will be done with that blood? You know, do they really understand the centrifuges that will be used and, you know. But the question is, is there any risk? Is there any risk being in? And I would say, are, are the subjects 
worry that old people are going to laugh at them, you know, which is what happened here in this room. You know, well, I laughed at them. I laughed. This old person laughed. At them. I laughed at. Them. But to me, that's not. But that's not a to me. That's not really a material risk. I mean, that's sort of a fact of life. That you know. So, is there a real risk to the subject? And one of the reasons I say this is, I think that some of my students will say, "I'm going to give the transcripts back to the subjects, let them change what they said." And I actually hate that. And I always tell my students, take it out. It's onerous. It's ponderous. You'll never get anything done. If anybody does question, they're just going to take the whole transcript. You're going to waste your time. Besides which, everybody always gets cold feet if they, if they start to really look at this thing. So I, I think some of the times we, you know, the, the, you have to ask yourself, what are we really trying to protect? Did the person not know they were participating in the research? Did, did we violate their trust in some way? I mean, the guy who yelled at me for half an hour believes that I violated his trust. I, I know I did not. I mean, I didn't even do what he accused me of. That's so, so I think we have to separate. Will one of our subjects become upset later from the subject? Are we exposing them to unreasonable risks? And informed consent to me, philosophically, can anybody truly give consent? Is your, is your will truly free at any moment? I mean, that's a question that has been pondered since you know, for thousands of years about uh, these things. So I, I think we can, we can raise the bar too much. And, and I worry sometimes that my students start to get these models of things like reapproval of, of transcripts. And I hate that. And it's totally unpractical some places I work. Can't even print things where some places I work. You know, I can't even get electricity sometimes to, to you know, to type up my notes. So how can I provide this service? You know, I've had students say they're going to give back all the photos that they've taken to all the subjects. And I say, stop. Count up how much that's going to cost you before you agree to this. You know, 10 cents a print. This is going to be ridiculous. So I think we have to be, you know, the informed consent, it, to me, we have to realize that philosophically, it can go to the point where you, you've given consent to nothing. And so that's what I'd sort of push back a little yeah. bit. That, that, in this. No, and, and I think being pragmatic is important, but I also do think that there is um, a need to be thinking about the particular context of the, the research. So... From my point of view, um, with certain types of the research that I'm involved in, and the example that I was using this morning, where I'm talking to survivors of rape and sexual violence, um, I actually do think that being able to engage in that process is really core. Um, I think that ensuring that consent is ongoing and recognising consent as an iterative process is really, really important. I would hate as a researcher for the sake of pragmatics to take the words of a woman who has put herself out there in every respect and shared the most intimate details with me for the purpose of research, not to have processes that are as respectful as possible and protective. Um, I'm not disagreeing with the, the particular case at all. What I'm, what I'm suggesting, though, is that the same standard oh, I, that applies I, I in your agree. project shouldn't no, apply to every project. And, and that's, we've got that's the disaster, point that I'm making. You know? I'm saying it, it needs to be context specific. And, and, and that, I think, is really talks to one of the broader issues that we've been talking about in this session, and that is recognising that when we are talking about these different issues around research ethics, that research is very varied and that we need to be thinking about the particular context of, of the research that is being undertaken. 